Hello everybody, this is Dream Gamer back for to conclude round one for the Earthshakers tournament and we have four more matches for you to sink your teeth into. Starting off with Lexovasaurus versus Tujongosaurus, Nodosaurus taking on the Cyjania Tector, Talarurus going up against Alpha Kentrosaurus, and then Ankylosaurus taking on U Uopocephalus. So without further ado, let's get on with these matches. Make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe for more tournament videos. But without further ado, let's go with match number one of this video. Yes, we have a clash of the crits, as in the red corner, we have a Lexovasaurus. Lexovasaurus was a dinosaur I rated very highly when I did my tier list. And I rated it as quite beastly. Although, this Lexovasaurus is a is super defense type, not lethal type. So its crit isn't as insanely as high as this Tijongosaurus is. Well, we all know Tijongosaurus at this point. I keep drawing on about how powerful its crit is. The king of the crits. That rock roller will definitely pack a punch. Actually, I am curious about something. Does this max out at a certain point? Is it like a certain amount of damage where it will max out? Or does it just show that it's maxed out it'll go on? Interesting proposition. I suspect this shows that it's maxed up, but I suspect the damage is still added up. But anyway, let's get on with this matchup. Mm, start with a tie. That will suit Lexovasaurus more, as it sustains less damage, and it does have the sand trap. And the tiebreaker as well. Lexovasaurus, like the Sauropelter in the last session, definitely a tie specialist. Although Soro Pelter was more of a tie specialist because they have the charge to Bam. The space pirates clashing in the Alpha Arena for some reason. And the Lexovasaurus has an early lead. Lexovasaurus is mightily impressive there. Ooh. But. A crit that could change everything. Yeah, look at that. And a critical block, so you know what that means. Bye-bye to the crit for the Lexovasaurus. And Tijongosaurus will be going Skizzers. Okay, you can't go four Shia. You can't go Rock Shia. It's cheating. But the tiebreaker there does stop the damage, so... Fools. Tijongosaurus didn't take full advantage of that. However, it will take advantage of this next upcoming hit. That gives the Tijongosaurus... Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got taken by surprise there, eh? but it does in fact give the Tijongosaurus a 1-0 lead. But don't count the Lexovasaurus out yet, because it definitely put up a fight and could be one to watch in this tournament. Well, let's see if it, the Lexovasaurus can fight back in round two. <laughs> I hope I didn't... Oh, wow, we're in the Alpha Arena again. Skip! I hope I didn't forget to swipe the character card. Okay, no, I didn't. It's quite an even match the first round. The Lexovasaurus. I'd probably say Lexovasaurus got off more hits, but the Tijongosaurus did get off that big crit that enabled it to basically win. But Lexovasaurus looked very strong, so I wouldn't count it out. Ooh, opening with a crit like that. Lexovasaurus on top. Although its crit packs nowhere near of a punch as Tijongosaurus is crit. However, two crits in a row, Lexovasaurus looking strong again, but again, the Tijongosaurus was in this position in the first round, and it came back strong. I should re I should really do these guys. Oh, that's a tie, no sand trap though. See, we had this in the last session with a Soro Pelt, though, we got tie after tie after tie, and yet there was no sand trap. <laughs> Lexovasaurus? Quick as a wink, even in the score. Okay. So you know what that means? It's all going to come down to this next round. Ah, good, a volcano field this time. Not really keen on the Alpha Arena, to be honest. Although, I will say, the Alpha Arena like battle music theme seems to be the easiest one to mute out. So, yeah, there's the advantage of the Alpha Arena. And yes, I unfortunately, I've still pretty much made zero progress in getting rid of the background noise. Well, the, the background music for these battles. Which is a shame, but it is what it is. I mean, I came close in the first part of the Earth Tournament, but I wasn't overly happy with the distorted sound effects, if you get what I mean. 
But anyway, enough about that. Back to this, back to the matchup. We're at one apiece, and it's all gonna come down to this. Yes, I think I will next time. So, you know, I, I talk about these stegas sort these two a lot, so I think I think it's about time I did make them for Jurassic World Evolution. Of course, that, they won't they won't be in the next showcase I have planned because the next showcase I have planned is uh, focusing on lightning dinosaurs. And as a, as a twist, this will be the first showcase I do, which will involve all new species. So there won't be like one a, a ceratopsid that's already in the game. They're all completely new species. I finished one Sunday. I'm well, I'm in the middle of doing one, which I which I'm halfway finished it this morning. And then I got two more to do, and then I get to the showcase. Well, back to this match, and I think the Tajongosaurus is about to win. I'd be shocked if it didn't kill Lexosaurus here. A rock roller imminent. A win for Tajongosaurus imminent. And unfortunately for the Lexosaurus, it is a defeat. But the king of the crits, booking his place in the last 12. Tajongosaurus looking mightily impressive and if it gets off rock rollers in this tournament, it's going to be very hard to stop. Okay then, that's the first matchup finished. On to our second matchup of this video, and it's going to be a tough one because we have Nodosaurus taking on the tournament favourite, Cychania Tector. Alrighty then, in the red corner we have the definite underdog in this matchup, the Nodosaurus. But do not underestimate the Nodosaurus' power because when it featured in my tournament, it was one of the most impressive dinosaurs in the tournament. And it definitely displayed what it can do. It's still going to be a tough ass though because in the blue corner we have the tournament favourite as I said earlier, the Cychania Tector. And let's be honest, it would be quite a big shock if this guy didn't make it at least into the top three. <laughs> but you know what's interesting? The armored dinosaurs, they've gone far in this tournament, but they never actually won it. Maybe Cychania Tector will break that trend. Well, a good start from the Nodosaurus, though. Getting off the first hit. Although, Nodosaurus' attacks are quite balanced, so, you know, decent hit there. Oh, that's a tie. The Cychania Tector does have tie attack. There's the Archaeopteryx charm there. One of those moves that's either really amazing or really bad. Another tie. Another Archaeopteryx charm. Oh, look at that. See what I mean? It healed up way more than it should have. I honestly don't understand how that move actually works. Oh, both of our combatants have Crystal Crusher. And Nodosaurus's Crystal Crusher has just been triggered. And Nodosaurus also has the Sand Trap. So it's not, you know, Nodosaurus still has a fighting chance. Ooh, the pink scissors scissors type there being triggered. So if Sanchini Tector gets off the head, which it does, I think that's curtain for Nodosaurus. Yep. For those of you that don't know, Scissors Scissors type increases your attack strength if you hit the same move through consecutive rounds, like the like I did there. But anyway, enough about that. No surprise to see Saichania Tech to take a 1-0 lead. Let's move on to round 2. Alrighty then, round 2. And yes, I changed characters for Dr. Taylor, because Dr. Taylor's awesome. and <laughs> We're going to see a lot of Ed, so... I think we can afford to use. I think we can afford to use Doctor Taylor as well. Doctor Taylor, and let's not forget Doctor Taylor is my favourite character in the whole franchise because he's not, He's cool, right? He's cool. Like I know that the screws that we've seen, freaking Doctor Owen, the coolest paleontologist ever. He's not. This is Doc. He's not even close to Spike Taylor. This guy owns a freaking laboratory for crying out loud. Although then again, Dr. Owen owns a museum, so uh, that kind of trumps that, I guess. Anyway, back to the match. Well, Sidechainia Tector dominating early on. It's just not happening for the Nodosaurus. Ooh, a tie will help it, though. 
Although the Thai attack. The oh, fuck. Archaeopteryx charm coming in there. Again, I, I don't know what to make of Archaeopteryx charm. It's either in a really amazing move or it's rubbish. Like sometimes you. Oh, fuck it. For goodness sake, Nodosaurus should just wave the white flag here. Yep, just wave the white flag, Nodosaurus. You're done. You're not winning this match. Now look at that. I had the Dino Tector as well. So if there was another tie, we would have seen Dino Tector. We might as well just wave the white flag. Poor Nodosaurus. Maybe should have just surrendered. No surprise there. Sidechain Yotector dispatching Nodosaurus with relative ease and booking their place, her place I should say, in the last 12, where it will take on the king of the crits, the Tajongosaurus, which will hopefully be a much more physical test for the Sidechain Yotector. Okay then, on to our third match of this video, and that will see Talarurus taking on the Alpha Kentrosaurus. Okay then, in the red corner we have the Talarurus. Now Talarurus does, well the Super Talarurus anyway, does see some play in my tournaments. Well, has seen play in some of my tournaments and we have seen what it can do. Although, those are, as I said, those are the Super Talarurus. We haven't really seen what the normal Talarurus can do. Can it bring a surprise? Well, it's going to be tough, because in the blue corner, we have an Alpha Kentrosaurus. Alpha Kentrosaurus, quite a strong dinosaur in this tournament. Could be one to watch. Although, the Alpha Dinosaurs don't seem to do too well in, this in these tournaments. I think maybe Alpha Acro, I think, went the furthest. I'm not sure. I'm not too sure. I'll have, I'll have to double check. Also, in regard to my tournament, I would like to say that... <laughs> I am gonna I am gonna compile together all of my past tournaments and upload it as one gigantic video. Just for you lovely people. Because I'm nice. Okay, Kentrosaurus getting the first hit here, and it's an alpha dice. Four big bombs blowing in the Talarurus' face, knocking it on its side. Decent damage dealt there, a decent start for the Kentro. Oh, another alpha move in imminent, and it's a banana surprise. Oh, sorry about that, technical difficulties. And well, no technical difficulties for the Kendrosaurus as it quickly dispatches the Tarnarurus with another alpha dice. Wait, will this be me? Yeah. <laughs> Wow, poor Talarurus can't get a hit. Well, a 1 0 lead for the Kentrosaurus. And I suspect the Kentrosaurus will be set up nicely to win this matchup. So let's find out as we move on to round 2. Alright then, round 2 between these two. Can the Talarurus actually get a hit? Wow, it's actually got really good attack for a thousand strength. Though. Or will the Kentrosaurus continue to dominate? Alpha Kentrosaurus size. Alpha Kentrosaurus has seen play in my tournament, and it has looked pretty good. Very balanced dinosaur, King. Alpha Kentro. Very balanced. Hey, the Talarurus got a hit! And it's a Dino Swing! Not much damage dealt, though, even on this Talarurus, I think is attack type? I think I used the attack type. Of course, the Talarurus doesn't have that high attack anyway. So it's kind of balanced out a lot, and its moves, I believe, are balanced. Relatively balanced. So yeah, that's probably why he's causing... It's doing damage, but it's not doing as much as I thought it would. <laughs> but the Talarurus is at least putting up a fight. And well, this time, it's Kentrosaurus that can't get a hit. And the triple headbutt comes in to knock the kneecaps of the Kentrosaurus out of position. Kentrosaur is not done yet though. It can still come come back from this. And even if it loses this match up here, which it looks like it's going to, it can still come back in the third round. And yet, just like in the first round, except this time, it's the Talarus getting off all the hits. Kentrosaurus could not land a blow. And Talarus has even the score. The eyeless beast itself. It's level with Alpha Kentrosaurus, 
So you know what that means? It all comes down to this next round. Ooh, we're in the Alpha Arena. That's not good for the Talarurus. Alpha Kentrosaurus kind of has a home field advantage here, we could say. Will that help the Alpha Kentro come back? Well, will it help the Alpha Kentro win this matchup? I wouldn't say come back, because it, 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 um, it was leading at one point. But the Talarurus mightily strong in that first round. Ooh, but the Kentrosaurus gets the first hit, and it's an Alpha Dice. Only two bombs, though, so not too much damage will be dealt. As you can see there. Although, at least the Kentosaurus got a hit this time. Ooh, that's a tie. Ah, I see now. The Talarurus is not attack type, it's charge type. Because that Quake Saber has been triggered. So ties do favour the Talarurus. And that will definitely favour the Talarurus. And Quake Saber imminent. Will this cut down the Kentrosaurus' chances of winning this matchup? Or will the Kentrosaurus come back? <laughs> oh, almost got it wrong there. But the Talarurus, quite impressive there, coming from behind to defeat the Alpha Kentrosaurus and book his place in the last foot, in the last 12. Almost said it wrong there, but I didn't. I saved it in the end like a beast. Um, yeah, that was a good matchup. That was a good matchup. Talarurus here coming back strong after a shaky start. The Kentrosaurus was kind of disappointing, but it put up a little bit of a fight. It wasn't completely one-sided in either one's favours. Well, the first two matchups were. The first matchup was heavily in the Kentros' favour, and then the Talarurus dominated the second one. And then you could probably say Talarurus dominated the third one, a couple of ties, Quake Saber, and Kentrosaurus only managed to get off one hit. But yeah, that was quite an enticing matchup there. But we're going to move on to our final matchup of this session, and the final matchup of round one, which sees the Ankylosaurus going up against Euoplocephalus. Alrighty then, in the red corner we have the Ankylosaurus. And yes, we're using Fool's Cap because he used Ankylosaurus. In fact, it was the last normal dinosaur he used before Armatus. It was quite out of the out of the blue to a degree. It's just he just had it, if you get what I mean. And funny enough, it was never it was never actually defeated. Well, it was about to be defeated, but then he called it back because he didn't need to fight it. Anyway. In the blue corner, we have one of the tournament favourites, the Euoplocephalus. And yes, we're using Zoe because in the anime, it was Zoe's friend that befriended a Euoplocephalus. So we'll say, we'll say, we'll pretend it's. What? what a guy kind of. Amy. That's what. Amy. Amy. That's the one. That's the, that's the name of the girl that befriended the Euoplocephalus. And the, and the friend that Zoe made. And the, and the reason why she beat the crap out of the Alpha Gang for hurting them. Boosh! Good start from the Euoplocephalus. This Euoplocephalus is an attack type Euoplocephalus. And being a gold, it really does pack a punch regardless of what move it uses. So Euoplocephalus definitely one of the ones to watch in this tournament. And I wouldn't be surprised if it won. Ooh, but... The Ankylosaurus getting off a mole attack. It's signature move Ankylosaurus, mole attack. Badoosh! And a Tappy Jar, a dive to come as well. Although, since Ankylosaurus' power is, seems to be more focused on the crit, not much damage dealt. Ooh, another mole attack and another Tappy Jar, a dive. Zuckily, zuckily! Boosh! Euoplocephalus, not looking in the best of shapes so far. Oh, okay, that's game over, Frank Iosaurus. Euoplocephalus getting a well-timed Quake Saber here to finish off Ankylosaurus and take a 1-0 lead. Oh, definitely. Boosh. Looking at the design for Euoplocephalus, it doesn't look to be the easiest skin to make. 
looks a bit of it all over the place, if you get what I mean. But anyway, enough about that. Let's move on to round two. Okay, round two here, and can this Ankylosaurus even the score, or can the Aquacephalus take the double? Wow, she got the Cephalus, actually, quite a bit of power to it. Quite the beast. Suttery, suttery. I, I like the way Fool's Cap talks in this game. Weird. Ooh, a good start from the Ankylosaurus, but it had a decent start last time and it didn't help. But here comes a stomping hammer, pounding the Rocklocephalus into the ground. Not much damage dealt though again. Now oh, Ankylosaurus's power is all in the crypt, as I said. The Rocklocephalus though, getting off a head. Oh, oh, get my buttons ready because it's a stun dash. Boosh, boosh. Decent damage dealt there. Euoplocephalus making better uses of its hits than Ankylosaurus. Oh, that's a tie. That means that Quake Saber's gonna get triggered. Quake Saber finished off the Ankylosaurus in the first round. Will it finish it off this time? But so far, no, because Ankylosaurus is getting off a mole attack. And a Tappy Jara dive to come as well. Even you walk in Cephalus's HP in the red. Oh, that's another tie. Can Ankylosaurus get this equalizing win? The answer to that is yes. Ankylosaurus does equal level things up. With a well-timed mole attack to finish off you the Cephalus. And even the score. So, you know what that's going to mean. Well, hang on, we'll let the animations and I finish first. It means that we are level. So it's all going to come down to this next round. Alright then, round three between these two, we're in the alpha arena. So, well, I doubt anyone has an advantage in here. As we have no alpha dinosaurs and no alpha gangers. Good start from the Euoplocephalus getting off the crit, landing the damage. Ankylosaurus, not off to the best of starts there. Oop, that's a tie. You know what that means? Quake Saber's gonna be a trigger. However, no Quake Saber being activated. Ooh, there's a chance. Nope, another tie. Ties favour the Euoplocephalus though, as it does have more health. And this should be the finishing blow. A kamikaze tackle to ram Ankylosaurus through the bottom crates and end their chances of doing well in this tournament. But as for the Euoplocephalus, it's right through to the last 12, where it will take on the Alpha, the Talarurus. Almost had Alpha Kentrosaurus here, but I saved it. <laughs> and that will conclude round one. Some interesting matchups there. Some dinos looking pretty good, some not so good, but we'll have a look at all that stuff now. Yes, that is how our lineup looks for round two, i.e. the last 12. So up here we have the, the two unknowns going at it, Pinocosaurus and Panoplosaurus. Then we have the impressive Tarkia taking on Desantururus, our local homeboy. And over here, we have one of the heavy hitters, Cychania, going up against Edmontonia. Down here, we have Alpha Wuhasaurus going up against Armata. And this one could be an intriguing matchup as we see King of the Crits, Tajongosaurus, taking on the tournament favourite, the Cychania Tector. And lastly but not least, it's going to be a tough matchup for Talarurus as it takes on another one of the tournament favourites, Euoplocephalus. And yes, some intriguing matches to look forward to here. So I hope you enjoyed this first round. I hope you enjoyed the matches in these videos. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any more matches of this tournament. And until then, this is Stranger Gamer signing out.